Hey, this is Yulia and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to tell you everything you wanted to know about studying in Canada. Me personally, I've studied at Algonquin College in Ottawa, Ontario, and I got two degrees, meaning I took two one-year program. So today I'm going to share my experience as well as some tips and tricks. I'm going to answer the most popular questions because sometimes, you know, when you're an international student, you have so many questions. Is it easy to study? How do I make my own schedule? Do I have days off? Can I work while studying, etc. So today I'm gonna answer these questions and let's get started. One of the most popular questions that students have is how do I make my own schedule? Each college and university is different. The college where I studied, Algonquin College, we couldn't make our own schedule, but we had some free days for studying. For me, it was Wednesday, I had a reading day, I could work, I could do my stuff, I can do my online courses. So we had some classes that were completely online. So I had this day for my studies. In some educational institutions like universities, you can actually build your schedule. You can say, I wanna take this class Monday, this class Tuesday afternoon. So you can have some free time, let's say Monday, afternoon and then Tuesday morning. How important is attendance in Canadian colleges? So for my first program, event management, it was crucial. I had to go to all classes. If I missed one or two, it's gonna be like minus 10% of my mark kind of thing. I don't remember the exact numbers, but like something like that. As for my second program, it was interactive media management. There was no attendance, I would say, because we had projects. So let's say you have a design class and you know how to use Photoshop and Illustrator and first classes were how to use Photoshop and Illustrator so you can actually go study go home go do your thing and then submit your assignment that's it they were not paying too much attention on the attendance because if you know you know I guess and then you have projects to submit and in my event management program there were not that many I guess assignments and projects so you have to be there and actually listen to what the teacher is saying. What about grades? Is there a final mark, exams, tests? What's happening in Canada? Because in Russia we have a term where you study, in the end you have exams, you're done. In Canada, depending on the program, you have, first of all, you have midterms in every program. This is made every six months so you can kind of like track your progress and then you have final exams after the whole year. Again, depending on the program, some of the programs have written exams, like my event management program. We had to actually study and then write a test. It was like multiple choice, um, fill in the gaps, all the kind of like classic test thing. As for my multimedia program, I had projects. So let's say for a design class, it was design a website. For a development class, it was build a website for my photography class it was like take some pictures edit them blah 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 so again depending on the program you have this different assignments but the weight of those assignments are actually kind of the same you have 100 percent your total a plus mark and then each assignment is like let's say 10 percent 15 percent again in my event management let's say you have attendance it's 20 or 30 percent of your final mark then you have like exams, essays, midterms, all the kind of stuff. So basically, if you do all these things, by the final exam, you'll have like 70, 80%, which is already a B. For me, the marks were not super important. B is already a good mark. I was not planning to get like a master's or like go teaching, go be a scientist. So B is fine. Theoretically, by the time you get to your final exam, you have like 70, 80% of your mark. So you can literally do a couple of exercises in your final test get like five percent extra of your mark and you're done because the i think the pass score is around like 80 85 so if you don't want to study for your final exam you can work hard during your term and then at the final exam do just like whatever how do people actually study in canada i know a lot of students prefer old school they like pen and paper write it down but for me in my college, people used laptops, tablets. Also in Canada, it's okay to take pictures. Let's say a professor gives you a formula. You can actually go take your phone, take a picture and you're done. You don't have to like rewrite it down. Also, I think some notes 
and like presentations that the professor makes for the class. You can find it online. My college used the platform called Blackboard. I'm not sure if other colleges and universities use the same thing, but at that time, five years ago, we used Blackboard where you can actually go download the slides from the class so you can kind of make notes. You can actually download them beforehand so you can follow along and then make notes. One thing that is very important while studying in Canada is plagiarism. In Russia, for example, it's not that important, I would say. So you can literally copy like a piece of text and paste it to your work and it's gonna be fine, like whatever. In Canada, you can't do that. You have to write your own essays. You cannot just copy and paste. You can copy and paste and then rewrite the whole thing in your own words. Actually, I think we were given a link where you can go paste your text and check like your work, how many percent of plagiarism it has. Having five to 10% is fine, but if you have more than that, then you're gonna get a warning. And I guess if you have two or three of those, you can even get like expelled from your program. So if you're planning to study in Canada, please be aware don't copy and paste from the internet because yeah things happen do we need any books for studying in canada there are a lot of fees associated with that because when you go to tuition fees page there is like books 2k and you like what am i paying for so in some programs like mine i had digital books i was given some keys in the beginning of the studies as for universities i know my friends had books that were like this Thick. they costed a lot of money but if you want to save money on books you can actually go to websites like Kijiji or Facebook marketplace find some books there if not there are a lot of groups on Facebook Algonquin College University of Toronto blah 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 a lot of students selling their books from the previous year so you can actually get them cheaper than buying brand new ones I've already mentioned grades and marks a little bit it's pretty straightforward a is like the highest f is the worst but what if you get an f so you fail a course or maybe an exam first of all you have to retake the course in Canada it is super easy if you fail a course let's say the passing grade is like 70 75 percent you get 65 you just pay again for this course and you take it again no retaking the exam unless you have a valid reason let's say you were sick in the hospital you have a paper saying you were in the hospital at that day then you can retake the exam or if you were feeling sick and you also have a doctor's note then this works but if you fail an exam and you don't have like enough points percent to pass the course then you're gonna retake it and pay again a lot of people also asked me about online courses before the pandemic times so we had some classes online i know some colleges do that as well so in my first program event management we had weddings and galas and sports management as online courses you had to pick one so each term you pick one course the next term i think was something else but yeah so you actually pick one course i took gala and weddings and you have slides presentations every week you have assignments and you have to upload them you can actually do those kind of courses in your free day like i've mentioned before i had wednesday for my readings studies but also sometimes we stayed with my classmates and studied after classes somewhere like in the common area maybe like in calf and one thing to mention here you don't get all the assignments and lectures and presentations at once each week certain day certain time they open so you can see the next assignment or whatever for the final exams and midterms they give you information in advance as well as you get a document with all the points all the percentage that you get saying essays are worth 10% attendance is worth 15% midterm is like 20 final exam is 30 so you understand what happens another interesting thing that I've noticed while studying in Canada they give you a grading system for each assignment let's say you have a videography class and you have to film a video they give you 
a piece of paper where it says you have to have an intro, two points, you have to have after credits, two points, you have to have five transitions, five points. So it's so much easier to actually do something where you have this plan and you know everything that you have to do in your video. Another cool thing that I've noticed in Canadian colleges is that they have so much equipment that you can actually go and rent and use it. This is nuts, because for me, I've studied in Russia. First of all, we don't have those kind of digital programs like IT, filmmaking, broadcasting. So we don't have all this equipment. Here you can actually go to a green screen room, install all the lighting, take some photos, like this is insane. I loved it so much because if you, let's say, want to study videography, but you're not sure which camera to buy because you're just starting and then you'll have to like sell it, you can actually take it from the college, use it, and then buy the one you liked. Some programs in Canada have a co-op option. Co-op is a term or semester where you have practice, work placement, whatever you call it. In my event management program, we had volunteering placements. We had to finish around 100, I think 20 hours of free work, actually going to events, volunteering, helping setting them up, cleaning. For my digital program, we had client projects, which is basically some nonprofit organizations came to college and said, we need help with branding, website design, video services, all the kind of stuff. So we had to do this for free as well. But you should also know that these work placements can be paid if you have a co-op semester. Some of them are not paid. You should check this in your program description or you can actually message college and ask if it's paid. If it's paid, it's gonna be, I think, minimum wage-ish, but still, it's better than nothing. What is a GPA and how important it is? So a GPA is a great point average and it's basically your marks. So a GPA can be found on a piece of paper like this where it has A+, plus, B-, minus, and then it says term total, it's 2.9, no judgment here. And then you have the total GPA for the program, it's 3.0. The maximum is 4.0. But again, I think GPA is important if you want to be a scientist, if you want to go teach, if you want to get master's, PhD, something like that. But if you want to just graduate from college and then go work, it doesn't matter. You can have like 2.9 GPA, who cares, as long as you can do your stuff. And also I should mention diplomas here, they look like this. This is what you get when you successfully finish your studies. You go to graduation here in canada it's called convocation you go to like a hall there is a stage the dean all people from the college are given speeches and then they invite each and every of you to give you actually this it took so much time it was so hot in this hall you cannot take any like cell phones water i guess everyone still had those but technically you're not supposed to so I went to my first convocation because I've never experienced this in my life and for the second one I was like no nah, I'm not doing this again so if you want to go if you're taking one program then you should definitely go if you're taking two programs like I did I would go to the first one maybe and for the second one just go pick them up like the diplomas yourself another important thing to mention in this video is time off in Canada we only have like holidays like New Year's, Christmas, blah, blah, blah. But we also have reading weeks. I think we have it in spring as well as in fall, but it also depends on the college, on the university, because I think in my college I had only one reading week and it was like in spring, in fall we didn't have it, even though some universities had those. So you have to check again with your college and see what they offer. And this is it. If the video was helpful, you can give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate your support and help. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.